Good day. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Today's topic is a walkthrough and an introduction to a new feature in SimSmith called NanoVNA Connect. SimSmith version 18.3 introduces a new utility called NanoVNA Connect. SimSmith connects to the NanoVNA over the USB port. It provides for the download of untethered measurements. It provides for standard short open load and through calibration and provides full 12 term correction. It provides five different measurement configurations and it writes touch tone files, S1P files for impedances and S2P files for measuring both reflection and transfer. Together, SimSmith and NanoVNA Connect allows you to make measurements and compare those measurements with models inside SimSmith. So what's coming up in this video? Well, this is going to be a watch over the shoulder kind of presentation. It's going to be informal. It'll probably be fairly long. It's quite ad hoc, although I do have notes on how I want to proceed. There will be a few dead ends along the way. I may make or use stupid techniques. This is intended as a learning experience about the tools and their capabilities. This is not a tutorial on best practices. I'm still learning that. Here is my work environment. I have a Mac, a Nano VNA with very old firmware in it. It may or may not be the original, I really can't remember. I have a box of jelly beans. There's loads and shorts and opens and barrels and that sort of stuff down here, along with three different devices that I'm going to use to demonstrate NanoVNA Connect today. I have some homemade standards. They are homemade. They're not particularly good, but they're adequate for the things I need to do, which are generally under 250 megahertz. Here's what we're going to be playing with today. I have a device which is a shunt RC. I have one which is a series RC. I have one which is an LRC, which is asymmetric. And I have my standards. In my standards, I have a known load 49.4, a terminating load of 49.6, and this is used for isolation calibration, and so the terminating impedance is not critical. I have a short, where both of these are shorted independently of each other. I have two opens. Again, they are open and independent. And I have a through right here. Okay, let's get started. Just remember that this might be fairly long. Of course, you can always suspend the video and come back to it later or skip ahead. It will be fairly ad hoc. I'll try to edit out any long spells where I'm thinking and not talking. The goal, again, is to get acquainted with this new utility, which is Nano VNA Connect, and how it interacts with SimSmith and how to use them in parallel. So, when reasonable, you're going to have to watch me enter in circuits. So here I have a brand new installation of SimSmith. I have run it before so you don't get the warning that it couldn't find the previous circuit, but I have not yet used Nano VNA Connect. To use Nano VNA Connect, I'm going to come up here under the View button, and I'm going to come down here to do Nano VNA Connect. 
the first time you bring it up, it has no idea what port to use. So again, on a Mac, it may be different than on a PC. I'm going to click on this and Nano VNA Connect gives you a list of all the serial ports that it might be trying to use. In my case, the Nano VNA Connect appears as this entry, which I selected, and now it makes the connection and this turns non-red. Now, as I said before I started, my goal is to download a measurement that I had previously made and corrected using the Nano VNA firmware. And in order to do that download, I need to change the mode. I'm clicking on this to retrieve data once, one time, and then I'm going to say go. And so Nano VNA Connect has reached out to the Nano VNA, uploaded the frequencies and the data, and written this file, which is an impedance file. And because it wrote an impedance file, Nano VNA Connect tells SimSmith to do an automatic import of it. So over here you'll see it listed as an import. And when SimSmith has an import, it displays the entire trace, regardless of what other things are being swept. You'll notice up here that the from, to, and step has been updated with the frequency information that was downloaded from the Nano VNA. Well, that was nice, but as the old commercial used to say, where's the meat? What we just did was we made a measurement on the Nano VNA. We used the Nano VNA software to calibrate and correct that measurement. And then we used Nano VNA Connect to download it. But Nano VNA Connect can do all of the calibration and it can control the capture directly by using the USB port. The first step in this whole process is calibration. One should do calibration at the beginning of every session. You should calibrate at the beginning of every session, always. Why? Well, you might have unknowingly changed something. Even swapping two seemingly equivalent cables can make a big difference, especially at higher frequencies. It only takes a few seconds. Remember, Friends don't let friends skip calibration. Now to do a calibration using Nano VNA Connect, we're going to start the calibration by clicking on a button, and then we're going to connect a series of standards, specifically an open, a short, and a known load, and then we're going to connect the two ports together. Then we're going to set the standards and I'll show you all that right now. So here's our previous measurement. I'm going to get rid of this. And we want to do a calibration. In order to do that, we need to change the mode down here. We don't want to retrieve any more data. We're going to go back to once. And now we have our calibration information appear. I'm going to start a calibration. Uh, let me change this. I'm going to make this 500. And we're going to make the step 1 megahertz. And 1 to 500. We're going to click on this, do the calibration. So the first step is to connect my open. So I'm using my little four cornered homemade standard. And I'm going to connect to the open and hit OK. This takes a few moments. You'll see up here it's flashing saying it's working. There it's done with the open. We'll go to the short. Hit OK. Now we're going to connect our reference impedance 
and terminate the second port of the nano VNA. Hit OK. And now we're going to connect the through. And hit OK. And now we have done all the calibration measurements, but we have not yet set the standards. In this case, we go to click on standards, and we can play with all these offsets and whatnot, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to set this, which you may remember was 49.4 ohms. And having done all that, I don't need to write this out, but if I exited SimSmith, I would lose all this information. So I'm going to write the calibration file right here, write. And I'm going to write it I'm going to note that I didn't have any offsets set in it. And I'm going to save it. And now you can see here it says the calibration has been written into this file. Okay, a little bit of background here. Just what does the nano VNA measure? Well, the nano VNA is really a one and a half port device. It measures everything on, on one port. Specifically, it measures the reflection on that port. And it measures the through kind of. It does not measure the reflection on port 2, and it doesn't measure the transfer function of port 2 back to port 1. In order to get those two things, S22 and S12, you have to reverse the device and make another measurement. Only when the device has been measured in both directions do you get true values of S11 and S21, and S12 and S22, of course. So this presentation is going to go a little backwards from what one might expect. I'm going to start by making a full two-port measurement using the device and the device installed backwards and measure all of the S parameters. I'm doing this because once you see all of it done, you will understand how it's possible to make some shortcuts to make things in the future a little more streamlined. So the complete solution is to measure the device in the forward direction and record S11M, which is to say the measured version of S11, and S21M. And then we're going to reverse the device and make a second set of measurements. In this case, we would be effectively recording S22M and S12M. And then we're going to put the device back in the way it was supposed to be. And we do that specifically so we don't forget which way the device is in the test fixture. Then, using all of those measurements, we're going to compute the real values of S11, S21, S12, and S22. So, here's my device that I'm going to be testing. I'm putting it in right now. I would point out here that SimSmith is a little backwards for historic reasons, and I apologize for that. This particular drawing shows port 2 on the right, but in fact, we will be injecting a signal 
into this port and measuring out of this port. So again, I apologize. Don't let these ports confuse what measurement is really being made. Yes, this is a backward land, and this is all done 12 years ago, so I'm kind of stuck. Then we're going to, once we do the measurements, we're going to do a compare with the an actual circuit model. And here's what we'll do for the comparison. So let's go get the data first. So here I want to measure a an asymmetric device. I want to store this in a convenient place. Let's do a series R shunt C S2P file. And before we get too far, remember that other thing was only 100 megahertz. So I'm going to set this to be 100 megahertz. So we're going to do a series R shunt C not symmetric 1 to 100 megahertz in one step, one megahertz steps. Go. So now it's telling me to reverse the device so it can measure the parameters in the other direction. And I'll do that and say go. And now I'm going to restore the device, which is not strictly needed, but I do that so that I don't forget which direction it is. Okay. So now we have made a measurement and we wrote this file. We can go look to see that the file is there. Series shunt RC. Yes, it is. And now to compare them, I need first to be able to look at that file. You notice nothing got imported. There's no way to directly import an S2P file. I need a way to look at it. So I do that in SimSmith by using an S block. And here in the file, I'm going to use this S2P file that I just wrote. And I want to turn on tracing. In this case, I'm just going to use whatever frequencies are in that file. And I want to do just the data of S1. So that is... What you see here is the impedance looking into that circuit as measured by now VNA Connect and corrected by the calibration. Now I want to compare that to a circuit model. And to do that, I'm going to run two circuits at the same time. That's what this block lets me do. And I want to put in a model. Here's my model. And I happen to know that that looks like this. And I want to compare the impedance looking into my model with the impedance looking into the measurements. So I'm going to turn that on down here. A. Nothing's going on there yet. And now I need to set this. I think this is about 100 puff. And I think this is about 47 ohms. And you can see here, if I zoom in, there's the measured. There is my model. They're not the same. And we could play with this. I'll do a quick play, but I don't want to spend much time on this. There's a distinct possibility that there's actually some inductance in here. So I'm going to, I'm going to try putting in a little inductance. And maybe like one nano. So it gets me a little bit to where I want to go. I tweak this a little bit. Maybe there. 
what else might be happening? Well, this capacitance might be a little wrong. That gets me to be even here, but it shows a difference back here. So there's some other parasitic in there that I don't understand, or my calibrations are wrong, or the nano VNA has an error. And you can go down this rat hole forever. But for the time being, we're going to declare victory and move on. So here was the circuit we used to make the comparison. I put the circuit on the left here. We'd put it on the right. Either way, it doesn't matter. And we had the two traces more or less overlap. And we made a full four-parameter characterization of our device under test. I already did all this. There's lots of different reasons. The nano VNA might be bad. The calibration might be inaccurate. The model is inaccurate. And I explored some of those things. Okay, so back from that diversion. Remember that we noted that S1, S21 and S12 appeared to be essentially equal. This turns out to always be true for a passive device. And if you have a passive device and those two parameters are not really close, you have a problem somewhere. We also noted that S11 and S22 are not equal. These are the reflections looking into the two ports. Unsurprising, one side has a capacitor and the other side has a resistor. If they were equal, then the device would be symmetric, and that will turn out to be an interesting point. So that remember that for passive devices, S21 and S12, the transfer values are the same. So if for a truly symmetric device, we shouldn't even need to reverse it. Let's check that. Here's the symmetric device that I'm going to go test. So we need a new, a new let's start with a new circuit. No, let's not save that. So we're going to go 0 to 100 with calibration. We're going to say it's not symmetric, and we're going to say this is shunt rc full shunt rc full not symmetric go it's going to reverse the device okay restore the device okay and as before we didn't get an import because there's an S2P file, and the way we look at that is to do this, and we select that device. Right here. And let's look at this. S11, now this is symmetric, so we expect S11 to look pretty much like S21. Not exactly the same, but they're pretty close. And S12 and S21, these two are not exactly the same, but they're pretty close. And let's look at that impedance. So we're going to sweep from the frequencies inside this file. And that's what we get for the impedance looking into S1. Let's do an interesting thing here, and we're just going to reverse this model. We can do that right here, and we'll see if this changes. And you'll notice that it did change. So that tells me that the device is not completely symmetric. It's pretty close. And for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to go ahead and assume that they are symmetric. And so let's make a comparison here. 
let's measure this device. Assuming it's symmetric, we're going to say that it is symmetric, and we're going to say go. So this time it's not going to ask us to reverse it because we told it that it was symmetric and to just assume that that was correct. And we're going to look at this again. And where did I go? Assume symmetric. And we'll turn it on. And we'll see that it actually pretty much conforms to the first direction that we measured and not so much to the reverse. But again, we assumed it was symmetric and for many purposes, assuming it is fine. But to get a completely accurate measurement, you have to do with the full thing. So here's the circuit that I said I was going to compare or measure. And here's the circuit that we're going to use to compare the actual model from the measured. So let's go back to SimSmith and put in a circuit. And we believe that this is like 100 puff, and this is like 47 ohms. We want to compare the impedance looking into S1 with the impedance looking into A. So we'll turn on A, and we see that they are not even close. Now why is that? Well, again, there could be a variety of reasons, one of which may be that there's that little bit of inductance that we aren't modeling. So let's put in a little bit of inductance. Actually, it should look like this. And we'll play with this a little bit. So here we have a potential better model for our device under test than was originally believed. There seems to be a little bit of inductance before the RC. That may or may not be the case, but that's the model for the time being, and we don't want to belabor this point, so we will move on to the next step. If we know that something is symmetric, we can just assume it's symmetric and move on. Okay, so there's a special case for shunt-only devices. If I go back and look at it, here's my circuit. You'll notice that this voltage and this voltage are the same. And I can completely characterize this as a simple impedance of an R and C in parallel. So if I wanted to compute that impedance, I have two ways. One is to use S11. And if I know S11, then I can use this formula to get there. Or I can use S21 and use this formula. So in theory, the computation should be exactly the same because this is true in an ideal world. In a purely shunt configuration, in practice so there's a difference between S, using S21 and using S11 because 21 is more tolerant of measurement errors. Now in the case of a 
pure shunt configuration, nano VNA will do that calculation of the impedance for you. Let me show you how that can be done. I can use nano VNA connect and I'm going to say here that it is a shunt measurement. Now notice that it's now an S1P file and that means that it's just an impedance. I want to rename this. It is a shunt RC and we're going to say that. So we're going to do a shunt RC file using the shunt measurement mode and I'm going to say go and with other impedance files SimSmith puts it in. Now why are these two different? They are different because this one is measuring looking into something that is my shunt circuit in parallel with 50 ohms and I'm really trying to measure this in order to make that comparison, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to copy this to here. I'm going to say this is not, and I want to get rid of this resistor. So I'm going to get rid of this resistor by setting it to be one gig. And now, Looking into A1 should reflect just this impedance. And as we see down here, we do in fact have them roughly compare. And you'll notice again that there's a difference. And this may change. So for example, here's a case where the inductance needs to be slightly different depending upon how you're doing the measurement. Again, this reflects my technique or the standards or the models. Um, I'm just showing you what the tools can do. So we compared the results. We plotted all the different ways we could do this. We could do it using computing S11, computing S21, computed using both techniques, and computed using the Nano VNA Connect, which is really the S21 model. Well, unsurprisingly, since the shunt has a special mode for measuring it, the series symmetric configuration is also supported by Nano VNA Connect. I won't go through all the steps and I won't demonstrate it, but here are the equations that one might use when computing the equivalent impedance of a strictly series device. If you knew S11, you could use this first equation. And if you knew S21, you could use this configuration. And again, the S21 version is preferred. So the one remaining measurement that we have not explored is probably the most common measurement made by amateur radio enthusiasts and this is a strict reflection measurement which is an impedance measurement and this is what antenna analyzers do. So we're going to go back to playing with that shunt device which was the RC in parallel and we're going to disconnect port 2 and make strictly port 1 measurements. So this is the third way. We're going to insert, insert the shunt device. We're going to disconnect port 2, not port 1, port 2. 
and we're going to set for a reflection and we're going to compare this. We're going to, well, let's get rid of some of this. Um, let's get rid of, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's get rid of this guy. And we don't need that anymore. And what we want to measure is that shunt device as a reflection again it's an impedance so we should see it imported up here and let's say go and it did appear up here just like we expected and unsurprisingly it looks a lot like the other traces It looks it looks the most like the shunt RC um, that we did and not so much like the circuit model. Can play with this a little again again just a little bit and we'll see so anyway so there was a mechanism by which we told nano vna to measure the reflection of that device and it imported it here so that was the final way that you might make a measurement with the nano vna using nano vna connect so summary of this whole video we showed how to connect to the nano vna picking the appropriate serial port we downloaded a previously made and corrected measurement we demonstrated the calibration procedure and we made five different kinds of measurements we started with the asymmetric measurement and then we noticed that if the device was symmetric we could skip one of the steps then we measured it using shunt and having nano vna compute the equivalent impedance we skipped over quickly the series version but it's it's the analog to shunt and then we showed how to do a reflection measurement using just the the s11 port of the nano vna we demonstrated how to save various files and how to display the results of both S2P and S1P files. We compared various measurements with the circuit model and noticed discrepancies between the two and played a little bit with the circuit model to see if we could more fully characterize our device so that it better matched the measurements. But again, there's no reason to believe that the model was wrong over the calibration or errors in the nano VNA. And we made some mistakes along the way, and I pointed out how we might detect those mistakes and recover from those mistakes. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Thanks for watching. Thanks for using SimSmith.